Hi everybody, thank you for joining us for another Conversations. I'm Candy Zenon, author and life coach and CEO founder of Change in Seasons Life Coaching, where I help single moms strengthen their faith, family, and finances through books, mentorship, knowing coaching, and live events. And this is another platform that I'm using to help you love through it, learn from it, and live after it. Today we have Ms. Nadine Payne, Mrs. Nadine Payne joining us on Conversations and she's here to share life experiences to help you live just a little bit better. So Mrs. Nadine, welcome. welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, welcome to Conversations. Thank you. So here on Conversations, what we do, we come to this platform and we share life experiences. We share what we had to love through. Okay. what we learn from and how we live after it so I'm asking you what are you coming to share what you love through today what I love through today mm -hmm. was um, domestic violence mm -hmm. um, I lived through it myself and um, unfortunately my daughter went through it and a depth of that and what I'm bringing to the table is to share my story and perhaps help somebody else mm -hmm. and help another person along the way to let them know that they don't have to go through it and they're not by themselves. That's right. I, I, I wholeheartedly believe we're not by ourselves. I serve the single moms and I always say that single does not mean alone. Yes. Single means whole and complete. And we're pulling on the village today so that we can become whole and complete. So I want you to stay tuned for more of Ms. Nadine's story. Thank you. Conversations. I'm so happy that you're sharing your Sunday evening with me. We're back to talk to Miss Nadine and we are going to hear from her and find out who is Mrs. Nadine Payne. Right, thank you again. Miss mm -hmm. Nadine is a child of God first. I'm a wife, grandmother, friend, neighbor, and a confidant. I consider myself living through my experiences where I could just talk to anybody and can relate with just about any kind, on any type of level. Mm -hmm. So that's about a little bit why I could say who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very honest, mm -hmm. I'm caring. Um, however, if you get on that bad side, Sinead may don't want to come. Ah, Sinead! <laughs> this is Nadine. I always like to ask people, what is the one thing or one phrase that you live by? Maybe hold it's an affirmation on. or a scripture? Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Yes. And I say, no matter how shaky the ground, no matter how weak you feel, mm -hmm. no matter how lost you feel, mm -hmm. hold on to God's unchanging hand. It has brought me through so much. Mm -hmm. Holding on to God's unchanging hand has also helped me grow into the strong woman I am today. Okay. So what what is that something that you feel that you had to love through that made that scripture evident in your life? Even starting earlier, when I was a little girl, I was a, a young lady. I had to help my mom. My mom had five girls. And I had to help my mom help raise us because my mom was a single mother. Okay. And you know, taking on that role as a mother, as a second mother, and as a sister too, was kind of a little challenging, but when the sister part didn't work, and then I kicked in, because I'm the oldest, mm -hmm. when the 
sister part didn't work out. I said, okay, so mom put me in charge. Uh -huh. So and they usually got through pretty good. But me and my sisters, we did everything. We um, it's so crazy to see and think about that when we when my mom had to move because she was a single mom and you know income wasn't always there. And of course, you know, baby daddies was out and did whatever he wanted to do. But the times that we were doing good, um, we ended up having to move ourselves. My mother always had to rent a truck, a U-Haul truck. Mm -hmm. And she had brothers that could help us. But, you know, they were young and they had their own life. So mm -hmm. we ended up moving refrigerators and stoves and take down bunk beds and put back up bunk beds and move sofas. It is me and my sister, me and my sisters and my mom. We didn't let mom do too much of anything. Mm -hmm. But um, my sisters and I, we, we did it. We did the moving. So y'all had to move a lot because of due to because of uh, the cost of living and the rent went up and my mom mm -hmm. couldn't afford it so we had to move to another location. Mm -hmm. But each time we did, we did um, we moved ourselves. Mm -hmm. Very rarely did we ever had any men because people thought it was unusual to see six females moving. Oh, wow. And we even had our little bitty sister out there. You carry the paper towel. <laughs> you carry the hand towel. You know. They, everybody carries everybody something. Work. Everybody worked. Everybody worked. Everybody had to carry their load. Absolutely. Absolutely. So would you feel that was the reason why you um, ended up leaving home early? Or yes. when did you leave home? I, um, after raising my sisters and I mm -hmm. for so long, and like I said, my mom was single, single mother, I got tired of it. I missed a lot of things in school. And, didn't participate in a lot of stuff because I'd come home and, mm. you know, run a house or do whatever. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't stay after school too mm -hmm. much. But long story short, when I um, was going to this one school, in Saint, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. So not East St. Louis. That's across the river. That's Illinois. I'm from the St. Louis, Missouri, uh, where the arch is. So. Okay. But I um, just got tired of doing playing mom mm -hmm. and I got tired of playing big sister and I get I didn't have a life to live mm -hmm. I thought to myself nothing negative to my mom that's just what happened mm -hmm. and then I met this male figure my first boyfriend mm -hmm. and he used to take me out and we used to go out to eat mm -hmm. and <laughs> it's so funny he took me out to eat and we would go to Steak and Shake. Mm -hmm. And you know, being a, steak and shake. Uh, yes. <laughs> and being from St. Louis and a family of five girls, you know, mm -hmm. everybody had two burgers and we had to cut it up. Oh. So the baby didn't get that much of nothing. Okay. We gave her more fries. But he took me to Steak and Shake and I was able to have a double burger by myself, fries, mm -hmm. and he bought me a shake. Okay. I didn't even buy me no little shake. He bought me the medium shake. Okay. And I was like, I gotta marry this guy. He's gonna feed me. <laughs> sure enough, he did, and um, mm -hmm. he married. He asked me to marry him, uh -huh. and we went back and asked my mom. She said no, cause that's the cook. Nadine's the cook. She can't go. Oh wow. I said I gotta go. Mm -hmm. And being honest, mm -hmm. cause if I'm on here and I have to say something, mm -hmm. I have to be honest. Okay. And so honestly. I'm not proud of it, but I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. I got pregnant on purpose. Okay. And I knew she had to put me out then. Oh. I knew she was going to put me out if I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So that didn't work. She said, well, y'all going to stay here. After y'all get married, y'all can stay here for a little while. Mm -hmm. So we did. We stayed there, I think, three weeks. I asked him to get us a place, and he did. Mm -hmm. We were able to get our own place. And mom wasn't happy, but, you know, I did it. Mm -hmm. I did. I had to do what I had to do. What I felt was best for me, mm -hmm. and then I could raise my own child right. and teach my own child mm -hmm. what I wanted my child to learn, mm -hmm. and not have to worry about. Don't teach them that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you met your own woman in your own home yes. with your own family. Yes, with my and own. And so, did family. you feel that you had your happily ever after? I thought I did. Mm -hmm. It lasted a good seven months. It lasts a good seven months. months. So After, from the time you met him to the time you married him to the first seven months of marriage, there was that it was good. Yes, everything was fine. Mm -hmm. The time when my son 
was seven months, a little over seven months. Mm -hmm. um, his father would go out and, you know, hang out with his friends or whatever. And long story short, we, we both were working parents. And once we were working parents, we um, eventually moved into a bigger place. Mm -hmm. And once we moved into a bigger town, it was a town home. And we would live in what we call the the black couple's sweet dream. We had a new car, uh -huh. he had a motorcycle, mm -hmm. and he had a car too. Okay. So it was just the three of us, and then, boom, I got pregnant with Janice. Okay. And with Janice, um, we were doing well, and we had friends over to the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, other couples who had kids, because all of us were in the kind of same little boat, working parents, but didn't have a place to go out mm -hmm. and go, and not always able to go to the park. Because mm -hmm. if you go to the park, then you got to feed the kids. Okay. So we all would bring food together to our house, mm -hmm. and we just all, all the moms got together, and got the kids together in the room to play, and we cook, mm -hmm. and the fellas got a chance to hang out too. Okay. That sounds fun. Three, four. Okay. Kind of. So it was a party for the kids upstairs. Uh -huh. Mom's in the middle and the fellows are downstairs. Uh, well, so that sounds fun. That sounds like the Huxtable. So yes. what exactly. happened? <laughs> exactly. So what was the turning point in that relationship? Was the it a turn? word? A phrase? Was it an event? What was that turning point when you kind of seen something like, something's just not right. Maybe we start talking to you differently. Actually, we were having... Uh, I remember just like two yesterdays ago. Okay. We were having the mama cook out mm -hmm. on Friday night, mm -hmm. and then we were going to let everybody stay overnight so the guys could get drunk and nobody would have to drive home drunk. And they were going to sleep downstairs in the basement. Well, one thing led to another. You know, everything was going good, and then a couple of the fellas was asking another guy's wife. To just step in the closet, he wanted to talk to her about something in the closet. I'm like, huh? That don't make sense. Mm -hmm. So they were going to the closet, and she coming out looking all googly eyed. I'm like, what in the world are they doing? Well, whatever. And then, long story short, so then it was my turn supposedly to go in the closet. Mm -hmm. And now, these all of us are friends, this is my ex husband's um, co workers okay. and their family. So I didn't understand the concept of him going in the closet with somebody else's wife and vice versa. So when it was my turn to go, I went in there with one of the guys and um, and I said, so what are we supposed to do in this closet? Mm -hmm. He said, well, we can do anything. We can stay here and talk, but I have to give you a shot of weed. And I was like, huh? He said, yeah, you have to smoke, take two hits. Mm -hmm. And I said... Uh, who's gonna draw? Who's gonna watch the kids? So that was I was like the caretaker because you know that had been in my system. So long mm -hmm. story short, I went on and took two hits of it, and I didn't know it was laced with cocaine. Oh no! It was laced with mm -hmm. cocaine. So everybody was kind of. I came out looking googly eyed. I'm sure like the rest of them did when they came out the closet. I mean, we really went into our closet. Mm -hmm. And when we came, when I came out, I was like, I couldn't stand it because I couldn't, I couldn't think right, I couldn't move right, and I was trying to take care of the babies and my kids, and mm -hmm. it just was so unnormal for me. Mm -hmm. But everybody else kept going back in the closet, okay. so I started drinking water, mm -hmm. and I started calming down a little bit. Okay, that's good. So I let them do whatever they wanted to do, and that's mm -hmm. when the turning point probably. Mm -hmm. Started so drug. The turning point was drugs was introduced yes. into the relationship. Exactly. Right. So then it came what verbal abuse. Then it came verbal abuse. Mm -hmm. He um, because I wouldn't play the games. I wouldn't have house parties. I wouldn't watch everybody's kids so they can all all the other women were going downstairs with the fellas mm -hmm. and had me babysit the kids. I said no, I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. So I would even take my two kids and we leave on Friday and go visit another relative in St. Louis, go to my grandmother's house mm -hmm. and hang out for a while because I know that they won't be there long if they didn't have nobody to watch their kids. Mm -hmm. So long story short, I went to, oh wait, I went, I went home and there was a female gender there, mm -hmm. and I would call her a lady, 
she was a female gender, mm -hmm. and he said that this was his friend and she didn't have a place to sleep. He was going to let her sleep downstairs, but she was supposed to be so distraught that he was going to stay down there with her to keep, mm -hmm. yeah, he was going to stay down there with her to comfort her. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he just then did a Shug Avery and yeah. bought his... Yes. Yes, he did. He did Shug Avery. <laughs> so the next morning when he got up to go to work and she was dressed to get ready to leave so he can drop her off. Mm -hmm. And then he told me, he said, um, so we're probably going to have her stay here and I'm going to go get our kids and how about you and the kids sleep downstairs and me and her stay upstairs. I said, huh? He said, yeah. And I said, no, that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then he hit me. And that's the first time he had that's ever hit That's the first time me. he had ever hit me. And I just brushed it off silly, thinking, okay, he's mad because I said, I'm not going to do it. I made excuses for him. Mm -hmm. And I should not have. But I did. Mm -hmm. Then, being honest, I made excuses for him. He called me later on that day and apologized. I'm so sorry. I was just trying to think about my friend and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, you can't expect me to move our family downstairs and then you and her upstairs. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So long story short, we um, he never did bring her back over again. I thought he had stopped saying her and all of that. Mm -hmm. Well, that didn't happen. He was going over to her house mm -hmm. on the south side. Mm -hmm. St. Louis. And while he was going over there with her, mm -hmm. he would come home late, be too tired and groggy and want to fight and fuss. And I wouldn't want to fight or argue because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more of a peacer, you know, peacemaker. Like, okay. do what you do. Mm -hmm. I'll just stay over here. Uh, me and the kids will be all right. You mm -hmm. just do your thing over there. And long story short, he just kept, it started getting real physical. And the first time it got really physical was when he was hitting me in my eye. And I have a little bit of makeup on, but I have a permanent black eye on my left side. Well, that was his favorite eye, hitting me. Oh, no. Because you're beautiful. You right. can't even tell what you've been through. Mm -hmm. Do a good job. It took me a lot of years to figure out how to fix that. Okay. But, but... I don't say it because I'm proud. I'm saying it because God gave me the good. strength mm -hmm. to carry on, mm -hmm. to move on, yeah. to keep going on. He was preparing me, mm -hmm. and I didn't understand. Okay. And long story short, eventually, the last thing that happened is that he was having, um, he had brought the guys over and the girls downstairs, but they didn't bring their kids. Mm -hmm. And then the ladies left to go get some more alcohol because I wasn't going. I wasn't cooking for nobody but me and my kids. Mm -hmm. And I didn't eat, so I just cooked for the kids. Okay. And I went to he go to sleep and then I'll go get something to eat. Mm -hmm. But he um, asked her to come down. I said, they, they were talking, they were laughing, music going and stuff. So I said, what do y'all want? He said, we need to ask you a question because you're smart. You went to that, you went to that kind of school. Because I went to a predominantly white school okay. in um, St. Louis. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And I went to Catholic school. Okay. So I got out there and they told me, they said, we're trying to see if these strengths work. Mm -hmm. And I said, what is that? He said, we're trying to see, we're having a conversation about if people can break out a rope if they get tied up. Mm -hmm. And he said, so we want to see if it work. We know you give us an honest opinion. I said, okay, because it was a bed down there. Yeah. And I went and I said, okay, what y'all gonna do? I can't be long because I gotta put the kids in the bed. He said, go put the kids in the bed and come back. So I went and put the kids in the bed and I'm coming back. The ladies hadn't came back yet. So then, I, so now they don't that long so I know they want to go get some more drugs. Mm -hmm. Then I go down there and they, they I'm not gonna say names, but Two of his co-workers tied up my hand, mm -hmm. and my, at the time my husband was standing right there laughing, and he and he looked at me and said, "Yeah, she go along with it. She's stupid." I'm like, "No, I'm not stupid. You stupid." Mm -hmm. 
because you letting your friends tie me up. But I, I really was a dumb one on that case. I just trust people. Yeah. I have a, I have a habit of trusting somebody. Mm -hmm. If they say they're going to do something and they want to experiment with something, I trust that they're going to do. It. I know they don't tie me up. No. And for real, for real, tie me up. And then once they tie me up, both hands and both feet, because my uh, we only had just two posts on the bed at the headboard. Mm -hmm. So my hands were tied. And then with my legs, they tied my um, one leg to one side of the bed up under the frame, metal frame. So the rope went up under the bed. And this one went under the bed. And I'm spread out like a chicken. I'm like, to try to get out. I said, okay, y'all yeah, know I can't get out now. Let's go. I'm done. I won't play this. Mm -hmm. And then so they said, all right, I'm going to give you a, give you a hit. And they were giving him hits pieces of crack cocaine to get high with and they could do whatever they wanted with me. Oh, they were taking my blouse off, they were taking my my bra off and I was just trying not to scream because the kids was upstairs. And I was like, no, stop. And I looked one of them, one of the guys in the press, I said, We're friends. I'm friends with your wife. How can you do this? Mm -hmm. And he said something I'm not gonna even repeat. And they did whatever they wanted to do to me. I couldn't do nothing but lay there. They raped me. They made me have oral sex with them. They um, ejaculated on me. I'm trying to say the nicest words. And he's standing up there high as a kite laughing. And I was just calling it. I didn't want to scream because I didn't want my kids to come downstairs to see me. Mm -hmm. So the, the women never did come back. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how many hours. And then every once in a while, he hit me, tell me, shut up, or sucker punch me in the face. This is your husband hitting you? Yes. And wow. they were all around. So and how many men total was in the room? Six. And not one man stood up and said, this is wrong. No. Stop. They all, they all thought it was funny. They all wanted, they, they did whatever they wanted to do. So when did this stop? When they got tired and when I woke up, because I passed out. When, when I woke up, everybody was gone. My, at that time, my husband came down the steps. I get ready to go to work. He said, hey, we can get up. And he cut my feet down. He cut my feet and us, and I had nothing. It was horrible. And then the hero gets so pissed when you go to work. I said, I tell him I ain't figure it out. I ain't doing this. Wow. And he went out the back patio door, walked around the house, and I could hear him starting up his motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And the only person that was in the house was me and the two kids. Mm -hmm. So I had to have my seven year old son mm -hmm. and my three-year-old daughter mm -hmm. come downstairs. Mm -hmm. I called for them and then I told Janice to come. I said, Daddy, don't come. Let Janice come. Mm -hmm. And when Janice came, I said, Dad played a bad trick on me. I said, give me a sweater or something. Cover me up so JJ can cut the rope. Mm -hmm. And I was calling with JJ upstairs. I said, Daddy, get your scissors and get Mama's scissors and bring them downstairs. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, Jazz just uh, she can't cover me all by right. And especially if you spread eagle. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I do is keep my legs caught for steering. Mm -hmm. And JJ eventually came downstairs and he said, What are you doing? You don't have no clothing. I said, Just cut the rope, have mommy cut the rope because dad was playing a game and then he went to work. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to stay calm and not cry, but I couldn't help it. Mm -hmm. I was humiliated. Right. He did it. Eventually cut the rope, and then I took my scissors and cut the other hand. And then I just sat on the bed, and I just cried. I just held him in my mm -hmm. car. I got up, went upstairs, took a shower. They were already dressed for school. Mm -hmm. And I took them to school. I called my grandmother. She was living at the time of my grandfather. And I told him I need to go 
make a place when I want them to go with me. Because I trust my grandmother. I was raised by my grandmother okay. for a short period of time. Okay. So they came and got me and went to Clayton County to file a report. Mm -hmm. And the judge said, well, why did you let them do that? And I said, sir, I didn't let them. I said, I thought that they were being honest. He said, surely you're not that dumb. Mm -hmm. And I just, this is the judge in Clayton County, Missouri, saying that to me. Wow. And I just said, well, I guess I was. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give him a straight on. He's got to come here to you. But I'm not going to make him move the house. So you get three levels. You go downstairs with the kids and let him upstairs or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother was so furious. She said, no, you're not going back. I said, no, Granny, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. I'm going I'm to do this. This is going to be right. Mm -hmm. Ever since then, I never told them about him hitting me, beating me. Mm -hmm. And I had maybe it was fashion fair at that time. Oh, fashion fair yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they can make your skin look natural. Right. And yeah. um, I use a lot of fashion fair makeup, but long story short, he just kept beating me and I just kept taking it, making an excuse. And I took it for 14 years. For 14 years. And I just wanted to ask, because you said standing there after you felt that the judge didn't do what you thought he was going to do. Yes. And now you had a decision to go with your grandparents mm -hmm. or go home. Mm -hmm. What was it that the thought that made you feel that you had to go back home? Because I was embarrassed, mm -hmm. to be honest. I was mm -hmm. embarrassed that my husband was beating me. Mm -hmm. He had did that to me. Mm -hmm. And I was embarrassed. I was just humiliated. How can you do this to me? You said you're supposed to love me. You said we're going to be, you know, this good mm -hmm. life family that brings our children right. Mm -hmm. And you did. So you were embarrassed to go back home and say that my marriage failed and this is what he did to me? Or were you, because you went back. Yeah. And you endured this. And from that point, did you make it 14 years or how many years had it been into the marriage? At this point, at that time, um, Jan was three. Um, at that time, it had been like eleven years. Eleven years. Eleven years. Wow! But you had been having the physical altercations. Physical altercations. Mm -hmm. One time, it just hit me. One time, we were driving down. I went to go pick him up from work, mm -hmm. and this woman was there. When I thought he had stopped, one from the south side. Mm -hmm. And she was there at his job, and he was working on my car. Mm -hmm. And I had came early to, so he wouldn't have to wait in the heat. And he opened up the garage door at his job. Mm -hmm. And she was in there, and, and she started grabbing him, and they didn't know I was sitting there mm -hmm. until he opened up the door. And then he was, so she said, oh, well. Mm -hmm. She was a project hood track. But anyway, so... He did what he did, and mm -hmm. she did what she did, mm -hmm. and she left. And then he said, you got a problem? I said, nope, I don't have a problem. That's, at that point, I started thinking, okay, now I got to get out of this. All right. I got to mm -hmm. get out of this. He's mm -hmm. on his job showing his coworkers, his, all these people who he worked with, and they know me. Mm -hmm. He's flogging her, but not me. He won't mm -hmm. take me. To the job said me and kids can come up on the job because they can't have extra visitors well now i know why because he had her and her kids up there so but that's all right mm -hmm. so then when we were driving from the job and we were on 70 going home and we were almost at the um exit mm -hmm. and for us to get out to go home and he said i said so how long this mess gonna keep going on mm -hmm. He hit the brakes. We driving down the highway in the center lane. Mm -hmm. He just slammed on brakes. And I said, what are you doing? He said, get out. Get out of my car. He said, I'm pulling up. And then he finally got over to the right lane. Mm -hmm. He said, get out. If you don't get out, I'm going to push you up. I said, you might as well start pushing because I'm not jumping out. I got my kids in the car. He said, I'll throw them out first. Mm -hmm. And he said, his kids, they ain't no other man's kids. He didn't throw us out. When we got home, I knew I was in for it. 
He didn't say nothing to me for a while. I put the kids in the bed, gave them a bath and hair, and put them in the bed. So if you're going to do what you're going to do, mm -hmm. I wasn't going to let them see it as okay. much as I could. Mm -hmm. And he did. He, he beat me that night. Mm -hmm. And he said, because I don't come to his job early. I get there when he tells me to. Mm -hmm. If he wanted me there early, he would have called and told me to come early. Mm -hmm. And he said, why'd you come early? Mm -hmm. Being nosy. I was, you know, I was trying to get me in my mouth. I have a tooth right here that's missing. Mm -hmm. But him, he hit, he hit me so hard that half the tooth broke off. Mm -hmm. So long story short, I went on and I, I went to bed. I slept in, I had the kids sleep and they each had their own room, but I had JJ come in the room with me and Janice. And I slept in Jan. We all slept in Janice's room. Mm -hmm. Did you fear for your life? I always felt for my life, mm -hmm. but I felt more for my kids' life. Mm -hmm. But the icing on the cake was that day. The next day, I went to work and I had to work late because one of the parents picked up their kids late, and I worked at a daycare. Mm -hmm. And he had picked up Janice and JJ because it was raining. And he was coming to pick me up, but it was I had to stay, so I had to walk home in the rain. And when I got home, I heard JJ crying and screaming. And I ran in the house, because I walked, it wasn't that far of a walk, but still, I was walking in a storm. He didn't come back and get me. He said he wouldn't come back and get me, so I had to hurry up and get home. I get home and I hear JJ still crying when I opened up the door, and JJ's at the bottom of the steps like this, and he just over there just hit me. Why don't you ever talk back to me? Don't you? Oh, and then God. I just got in between him and Jen. I said, what are you doing? Don't you hit him. And he went to go hit me. I said, hit me. Uh -huh. But you better not ever hit that baby. Ever mm -hmm. again. None of my kids. Mm -hmm. Said his cuss words and left mm -hmm. for the night. We didn't see him no more for that night. He called me the next day and said that he was uh, going to go to Illinois to see his one of his high school buddies, mm -hmm. and that he'll be back Sunday, and maybe I'll get myself together. I get myself together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm getting myself together. Mm -hmm. So I start plotting Did that you? Friday. That same day, he mm -hmm. called me and told me that. He wasn't coming to the house, so I start plotting. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nadine. Mm -hmm. Put your big girl panties on. That's Here we right. go. Uh -huh. And we did. Uh -huh. And um, I opened up my front door and this nigga was driving out. So I said, hey, hey. He said, yeah, what's up? How you doing? I know what's going on. I said, how much money you got in your pocket? He said, why? What you want? Mm -hmm. You don't want to do nothing like that. I said, I got a big TV in here. You got five dollars? Mm -hmm. He said, it work? I said, yep. I'm going to leave. Mm -hmm. I sold everything in that house. And I gave away the tissue that everybody didn't want. <laughs> I there was nothing left in that house. That's right. I threw all the comforters and the sheets mm -hmm. away, poured vinegar all over the mattresses mm -hmm. so nobody would be laying on them beds. <laughs> oh, I the house was empty. All right. And the icing on the cake mm -hmm. is that I had called the utility companies. Okay. Monday, the gas was gonna be out. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, the lights is going to be out. Mm -hmm. And Wednesday, well, the water comes with the, with the townhouse. Okay. I told them we'd be out there by Thursday morning. If we were not, they could evict us because we hadn't paid the rent. Okay. Because I took the rent and I left. And I went okay. to Texas to my mom. Good for you. My mom you. lived in Texas. Good for you. So I took my two kids mm -hmm. and went to Texas mm -hmm. to go be with my mom. And I finally told her everything. And she had not heard a word or a murmur about no. just maybe something was no. going on over there. No. Now, I, ju I just want to ask you, uh, and maybe you could share with the ladies that's listening to you, um, our gentlemen who, who are maybe in a domestic violence situation, each time you get another blow, mm -hmm. whether it's a physical abuse or other disrespect, mm -hmm. um, do you think, did he come and apologize afterwards? And did you think maybe that the, it, the tides were going to change and it was going to get better after the apology? Exactly. He did He did come and apologize. So each time he uh, physically attacked you, 
He apologized after. He afterwards. came back and apologized. Mm -hmm. And take me out. He said, I know you love steak and shake. Oh, he'll bring me home something. And you'll soften your heart back towards him. Yes. Hoping it'll be better. And so Hoping how be long better. after the, the apology did the disrespect or the abuse start? If, if it happened on the weekend, he apologized that Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It'd be good Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday is on. Friday night is it's on, it's on again. And it One replays week, itself every it was, week. It was either verbal abuse, physical abuse, or disrespect. Or disrespect. So now we're in Texas. You holly oxal free. You with mama and them. You say your children yes. to kind of let their hair down. and Because yes. children feel what their yes. mom is going they through, too. Yeah. They feel that tension. They see yes. it. They hear it. So now everybody can relax. Yes. And what happened? We didn't go outside for two days. Okay. Two or three days. I just wanted to make sure that he wasn't out there, mm -hmm. even though he had never, ever mm -hmm. been to Texas. So mm -hmm. that's why I went to Texas. Okay. Because he'd never been there. Mm -hmm. And I know he didn't know where to go. If he thought I went with my mom, he wouldn't know what it was because, you know, my mom was like, I'll tell him where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And the, probably like the fourth day, kids and I went out with his mom. Many cases are going to go up before it gets hot because it got hot there in Texas. <laughs> it ain't hot, it's hot. I lived in Texas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, so you know it's hot. <laughs> so we, I said, we're going straight down to 7 Eleven. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to stop at Mission Taco and get nothing to eat. We're just going to go to 7 Eleven, get them a slurpee, and then we're going to walk back so I can just get comfortable mm -hmm. walking the, back. Okay. And we went there, got us slurpees, and got the kids whatever they want, their little hot dogs or whatever. But one main thing I forgot to mention is that when I left, I took our income tax check. Okay. Our income tax check was like almost $1,000. Okay. So I didn't cash it because I mean I don't even gonna do nothing illegal. Okay. I wasn't gonna cash it, but he couldn't cash it either. Okay. And I wasn't gonna have him fake sign it and leave it. So mm -hmm. I took it with me. Because both your signatures were needed. Both of our cash the check. Names okay. are on the check. Mm -hmm. So I didn't I did not cash it. I had no intentions on cashing it. Okay. But I won't let him do it because I know he'll do anything to cash it. Okay. So we go to Seven Eleven mm -hmm. and. To be honest, I kept my little check in my little pocketbook. Mm -hmm. And then we go to 7 Eleven, we're walking down the street. Hey, B. Oh, no. Walking. B, baby, you hear me? And then oh, JJ no. grabbed my leg, and then Janice grabbed my other leg. And I was holding him, and I dropped my Slurpee. And I said, Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. He said, Where you at? And I said, that's not him. Mm -hmm. And I turned around, it was him and his friend. Were they driving up and down the neighborhood? They were driving up and down the hood. So they And he seen he hadn't seen me because we were inside 7 Eleven. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He never been to Texas before. Mm -hmm. He never knew where my mom lived. I didn't know where my mom lived until I got to Texas. Wow, so who you feel, was he close to when your siblings? He's not that smart, he's Did not that tell psychic. A friend or a sibling, one of your siblings? I have, it hurts me to even think who told him. Mm -hmm. But I know somebody had to tell him because he didn't know. He never and that was not the days of GPS, so somebody no, show had to wasn't. give. show wasn't. Step by step directions, yes. you know, yes. turn by the oak tree, yes. a yes. right yes. by the lino, yes. keep yes. straight by the white church yes, with the big steeple. Yes, so you had to give point Somebody by point direction. Had to give him exactly what, and mm -hmm. probably with him and his friend, his other high school friend buddy, who they were driving up and down the street because they didn't see us because mm -hmm. we were in the store. Mm -hmm. So when we were walking back to the house, it was just my whole world just came clear. I said, I know if I live through this, Lord, if I live through this, mm -hmm. if I live through this, I'm going to do the best thing and the right thing that you ever want me to do. Mm -hmm. If I live through this, because I left Texas and I got the check. Mm -hmm. He pulled up, 
get up from the bed, thought you were going to hide somebody. I ain't going to say the words he said, because mm -hmm. it don't matter. Mm -hmm. But he found me, mm -hmm. and he said, well, where your mama live at? Mm -hmm. Right there. Let's go. Get your S and let's go. Mm -hmm. And I, I was so trembling as I am now, just thinking about it. I said, I'm going to die. Wow. I am going to die. He going to cash a check, and I'm going to die. And then this this hoodlum chick going to raise my kids. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I got my stuff. And I'm trying to be right. I'm trying to say it nice and right. How did he get here? I said, I don't know. I know I didn't call him to give him the address. Mm -hmm. Wow. He got here for real, huh? And he was, like, he was talking to my mom, and his friend was so angry with me. I didn't give him the address. I didn't even know the address because my sister, one of my sisters picked me up from the train station. So I didn't even know my mom's address. I just know where to go to Colleen and get off in Austin. Mm -hmm. That's all I know. They talked. Mm -hmm. My mom and my, at that time, husband talked, mm -hmm. and she said to him, when we were getting in the vehicle, she said, if you put your hands on her, I'm coming after you. Mm -hmm. My man, I ain't going to do nothing to her, Miss Washington. We got this all the way to, from Texas to St. Louis. We didn't get on that. We weren't even out of Texas. She said, where the check at? Mm -hmm. Right in front of his friend, right in front of the kids, because me and the kids said my dad. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's at home. No, it ain't, because I told that house up. I said, you probably didn't look up under the sink. She mm -hmm. said, ain't no check there. You got that check. Mm -hmm. So as he was driving, he kept saying a lot of stuff. Yeah, wait till we get home. And you know, I just finally said, you know what, forget it. I threw it up front. And so his friend said, what's that? And he said, oh, that's a check. He said, oh, I knew you had the check. Mm -hmm. I didn't say nothing. We went on home. I said, yeah, we're going to be all right once we get home. Dropped his friend off. And then when we eventually got to St. Louis, he dropped um, his friend off at home. And then we went to the house. Yeah, he had the electric turned off, the gas turned off. They about put me out. They gave me till Sunday to get out. But it was Saturday when he came to Texas mm -hmm. and got me. Mm -hmm. So now it's Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, I might have to go live with Granny. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, but I might have to. Mm -hmm. Long story short, he asked me to sign a check, and I said, no, we need to go together and sign it. You're going to give me some money right now. You're going to give it to her, and y'all ain't going to get high off of this. Mm -hmm. well, no, All right. So they didn't bother us Monday because it takes like three days to get an eviction order, or oh, order okay. out okay. for the sheriff to come put you up. Mm -hmm. So Monday we went and cashed the check together. He gave me $100 for me and the kids, and he took the other $800 and some dollars. So that's all right. Mm -hmm. So I already made a plan. I wasn't going to go to my grandma's. I wasn't going to drag them into this. Mm -hmm. This is my fight. Okay. I had to fight my own battles. Okay. So I went back to the house. He said he would be back around 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And he'll take me to go get me and the kids something to eat. Or we could walk right up the street to Popeye's. It was new then. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, so he never did come back, but I had started making calls. And my neighbor next door, she let me use her phone. So I called the shelter. And when I called the shelter, I had to go to the uh, Salvation Army shelter in downtown St. Louis. Mm -hmm. So they told me I had to get somebody to take me there. So I had one of my female relatives to take me. Mm -hmm. And she was upset that we were going, she said, you don't need to go here, you need to go, no, I need to fix me, I need to fix mm -hmm. my own self. Mm -hmm. 
and it just so happened that they were doing a news story for the St. Louis Post Dispatch. They were doing a story that day about how different people become homeless from different backgrounds. Oh. And boom, there I am with my two kids and my female relative dropping me off. And oh, boy, oh you she were was on the TV? Yes, we were in the front page of the newspaper. Oh, wow. We made the front page of the newspaper. Mm -hmm. so I didn't sleep at all that night, of course, in the shelter because we're in a big, massive room. Cots there, and people go to different cots to try to, you know, and then there was one cot over here and then two cots over there. Well, I wasn't going to sleep like that. So eventually they made somebody else move so me and my kids could be in a corner by yes. ourselves. Because the women on one side and the men, the women and children on one side and the men on the other side. But there was just a shower curtain that, in between. Uh -huh. Somebody can go up under the curtain, somebody can just pull the curtain back mm -hmm. and come on the other side. Okay. So, that's, I didn't sleep. Mm -hmm. I didn't sleep. Next day, they told me that we had to leave because it's a night shelter. So they told me I had to leave. But they, um, by this time, I'm on the front page of the newspaper and the... Mm -hmm other shelter and the other salvation only shelter in St. Louis County mm -hmm. called and told them that they would come pick me up and me and the kids. Wow. So me and the kids yeah. went to the shelter mm -hmm. in St. Louis County. Beautiful, nice little room mm -hmm. that me and, just me and the kids left in. It was women and children only. Mm -hmm. And the photographer, his name, uh, he was a famous photographer from St. Louis. Okay. And he, um, he came there because him and my son name were similar. Okay. And the female reporter, she fell in love with my daughter because mm -hmm. she had these two little pigtails on the side <laughs> of her head. Mm -hmm. And um, she just thought she was just so incredible, mm -hmm. cute. So they did another story on us. Asked her, how do we go on us? Asked me, how do we get here? And I told them. Mm -hmm. And then she said, so you mean to tell me that your husband is, he's in a position at a university where he was the first African American to be in a position like this. Okay. And we were in a shelter and I said, yes. So they made it a bigger story, but I wasn't trying to make it a big story. She asked me a question I just mm -hmm. told her. It goes my innocence, I'm not thinking ahead. Mm -hmm. After she did the story, after she wrote the story, we were on the front page again. Okay. This time it was just me and the kids on the front page of the story. Mm -hmm. And I got a phone call at the shelter. Mm -hmm. It was from my husband at that time, father. Okay. Called me. Mm -hmm. And they put me on the phone because a lot of people were calling saying that mm -hmm. they had places for me and the kids to go. And I, you know, we wouldn't, I was known because. I worked at the daycare and a lot of the parents were calling and saying, oh my God, you can come stay with me, you and your kids. Mm -hmm. But when this gentleman called me, he said, how could you embarrass me so much? And I said, mister, and I said his name, how did I embarrass you? You're on the front page of the paper. Everybody at my job talking about what your grandkids and and daughter-in-law doing on the front page of the paper time of day in the shelter. You embarrassed me, I had to leave work. You left work and went where? Did you come to the shelter to see us? Did you come to the shelter and check on us? No, you went home and called me, telling me I embarrassed you. Because he's seeking help for you and your children. Yes. Did he go and correct his son? Yes. Did he go and handle him, tell him off? Yes. Or even beat him up? Yes. <laughs> And he said, I said, I didn't embarrass you. Mm -hmm. Your son embarrassed you. Exactly. By putting us here right. in this place. What am I supposed to keep letting He ain't hit you. I said, well, you oh, believe what you want to believe. Wow. But anytime you want to see the scars, just come and get me. Or come to the parking lot and I'll come on page mm -hmm. and let you see. So no did makeup. he come? Huh? Did, so did he come to the shelter and offer no. your money, a place to nope. stay, a help, help you to transition out? Nothing. Mm -hmm. So what about other family members? The lady that took me to the shelter, mm -hmm. the family member that took me to the shelter, she worked at the university with them. Oh. 
and they had a picture of her with all, because she wear a lot of rings. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the caption wasn't too nice. Um, saying, you know, how she gonna drop her, all her niece off and her kids and she got all these diamonds on her head. I was like, uh -huh. she had nothing to do with it. It's my choice. Right. And I made it clear. It was my choice. Right. I don't care if she we rolled off a Rolls Royce. Mm -hmm. It was my choice to come mm -hmm. to the show. So her part was to get you there and she did that. And we be thankful for that. Yes. 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 So but, leaving from the shelter to your place that you could really be free, that you and your children are safe, what was that journey like? Did you have to? That was an incredible journey. Mm -hmm. I grew up real fast. Okay. I went through so much stuff, staying with people in the shelter, mm -hmm. the things that they go through, the manipulation that they go through. Mm -hmm. It was it was scary. Mm -hmm. So I called my sister, and my sister and I had married two friends. Okay. And um, he, you know, I married my husband first, and then she married his friend mm -hmm. later. But, and he was in the military and they let me come to Virginia to live with them, me and the kids. Mm -hmm. And once they let us live, come and live with them with the kids, that journey on that bus, we took the Greyhound bus. Mm -hmm. And girl, let me tell you, we went through Pennsylvania. I had never been out east before. When we got through the tunnel, I was just crying. I was bawling. I hadn't slept. I was just crying. Mm -hmm. And when we got out the tunnel, mm -hmm. I screamed and thank God. I was free. I was too far for mm -hmm. him to come get me. Mm -hmm. I was way too far. Mm -hmm. He wasn't going to be able to drive there in one, two days. And he certainly won't get on the mm -hmm. G Dog mm -hmm. and come get me. So mm -hmm. I went there, and my sister and my brother in law let us stay there. And I got a job um, every place that we went. Like when we went to go get something to eat, I would ride with my brother-in-law. He was talking to me, encouraging me. And I said, can you stop over at church? I seen a help sign in there. Yeah, I'm going to get some chicken anyway. Mm -hmm. So we go in there, and, and it was a long line. This one lady was doing it. Her name was Miss John. She was just working it. And I said, Ma'am, do you need help? She said, do you know how to run the register? I said, you show it to me, I'll show you. So sure enough, she gave me a shirt to put on. I put on that church's shirt and a little star. And I put on my little hat and went to work. Right. Never had training. Uh -huh. So then, sure enough, you know, after I got the lines down and then we filled out the paperwork and then I was really, really hired. Uh -huh. So then when we went home, uh, when my brother-in-law picked me up, he said, I don't believe you did this. I told your sister. And I said, they need this one of them. said, you hired her? Mm -hmm. And she hired her. Mm -hmm. So she said, wow. So we go home. Next day, my sister had to take her daughter to her doctor's office. And the doctor's office was at side Fort Belvoir Hospital. Okay. So we go in there, and I'm just sitting in there. And I said, hmm, somebody better help clean this. I said, who's your custodian? Lady took me downstairs, met this lady down there, and I said, are you guys hiring? I never worked in a hospital before, but I know how to clean. Mm -hmm. She said, you see, I said, yeah. She said, can you start tonight? I said, uh, yes, ma'am, I can start tonight. Mm -hmm. So she said, you serious? I said, yes, ma'am. So I filled out the paperwork, went back upstairs to where my sister was. I said, you can believe this. She said, what? I got a job. I know, churches. I'm working here in the hospital cleaning. She mm -hmm. said, no. I said, here the paper. Uh -huh. She said, are you serious? Said, yep, I was determined. So you found that determination gave you yes. a newfound confidence, yes. a newfound boldness that yes. you didn't even know that was inside. That was inside me. Mm -hmm. have, didn't have a clue it even existed. So as a um, woman leaving domestic violence or in a situation now, take us through her emotional thought process. And help her get from where she is to where, what would be the first step that she would have to take? Confidence. Mm -hmm. Know that you don't have to go through this. Baby, you do not have to go through this. Mm -hmm. If he tells you that 
if he don't love you, he wouldn't beat you if he didn't love you, because that's what Lawrence told me. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't beat you. Hate me. Don't love me at all. Just just let them do whatever you want to do. Let them go on. Because what I've learned in my life is that God has something better for me. But I couldn't see it then because I was too wrapped up trying to get him right so we can be right as a family. But it didn't work. But you don't have to go through this. I'm here to tell you, you do not have to go through this. You can get out. Get your children and get out. Don't worry about that you can't pay the bills, how you're going to live. Somebody's out there to always help you. I promise you, somebody's always out there to help you. People who you think wouldn't help you will help you. They help me and my kids. They help me and my kids. That's very important to say because a lot of times, that's why I ask you these questions, because a lot of times there's a storyline going off in our head of why I can't leave. Yes. But the story or the rationale never comes in why I need to leave. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. if you have to endure physical abuse, verbal abuse, utter disrespect, um, there's no way in the world that's a, a haven of peace and your home should be a haven of peace yes. and the person who vowed to love you should just be do, mm -hmm. do that love you and love doesn't hurt yes, it and, does. and when, anytime you have to doubt or think about is this right or is this mm -hmm. normal talk to someone you know ask someone like you ever had this happen in your relationship mm -hmm. Or what do you think about this scenario? Because sometimes other people's perspectives can give you a new lens, a new yes. focus on the situation. Yes. You know him hurting you isn't right. And I love the scripture, and I, I share this with my daughters because I raised them as a single mother. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a relationship in front of them to demonstrate how a man should treat you. Amen. And how he should be kind to you and loving and patient. Well, I give them, I think it's 1 Corinthians 10. 13. Mm -hmm. Love is kind. Love is patient. And I say take that scripture. Take out the word love and place that person's name. Amen. And then read it with their name. Yes, Lord. Is he doing these things for you and to you? You could even do that with female friendships, uh, uh, friendships, uh, any type of relationship. Yes. Because if it's not good to you or for you, it does not need to be in your personal space. And you don't have to debate or negotiate or dialogue or accept Explain someone's behavior. Your first priority and your loyalty is to self, to mm -hmm. thine own self be true. And from that, it's for your children, your yes. children's safety. I feel, Miss Nadine, you woke up when you see yes. your baby on that step yes. crying and being yes. abused. And it, over like this. Yes, if it wasn't for you, you knew for your baby's sake you had yes. to get out there. Yes, I and I, I respect you for that Amen. because, you know, sometimes we don't know how to put ourselves as a priority yes. on our own yes. list. And sometimes we feel we can't endure whatever we need to endure so we can keep going on or keep everything copacetic. Yes. But yes. when it start, when we start seeing somebody who we love hurt, it wakes up something inside of us, and we have to love ourselves just as much yes. to make ourselves our priority. Yes. You don't need to be hurt. You need to be loved, and you need to be cared for. Number one, recognize if there's a problem, do something about it. Have a plan. Yes. Yes. And um, that's why I do what I do, Mrs. Nadine, because um, what I do is <clears throat> I help a single mom create a financial vision for their lives. Mm -hmm. And I do that because I know when you have money, money give you options. Yes. And a lot of times we stay in relationships longer than we should yes, because we don't have the money to make those yes. moves yes. that we need to. And we need his paycheck. Yes. We need, because we need to eat. Yes. We need to secure food, shelter, and transportation. Yes. And, and we don't have options to make moves. We stay and we take it. Mm -hmm. and, but you don't know to what detriment mm -hmm. that taking. Everybody don't get to live mm -hmm. to tell the story. Yes. Everybody don't get to live to tell the journey. Yes, and so you don't want to be on the other side of that. Okay. 
you want to get out with your life and your health and your organs intact, your children intact, that like Ms. Nadine said, there's always someone on the other side. Because when the student is ready, the teacher will arrive. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I don't care. When you say it out loud, yes. I'm done with this. I'm, done. I'm tired of this. Somebody will approach you. Yes. Someone will call you. You go see a commercial. But somebody yes. is going to show up because show God would never go against your free will. Right. As long as you willing it to happen, it's going to be. It yes. will be as you say it yes, will be. Lord. But when you say it's time for a change, it will be that. Things will change. And you will see things move out of your way. You will see things and people choreograph and, and move in a symphonic way to come to your rescue. Shall men give unto your bosom, meaning mankind, people, will come together and give you what you need to get you to a safe place. Uh -huh. And so now you got your new job. Yes. Then you got your place, a car, what happened? I got me a, I got a place. Uh -huh. So I stayed with my sister and brother in law uh -huh. exactly thirty two days. Mm -hmm. And I had a place um uh near Fort Belvoir. Mm -hmm. And thank God my kids were still able to go to the same school that my sister and them kids go to because they thought I was giving their address. And I said, No, that they could really go to the school. Mm -hmm. So the kids were able to stay in school mm -hmm. and then my sister and I went out one day, and I had and I got an opportunity to get a car, a brand new car. Mm -hmm. Got a brand new car, so and it's almost Christmas. My kids are gonna have the best Christmas ever, uh -huh. and my Christmas is watching them have their Christmas. Their Christmas. I bought them so many stuff. It was an all kind of toy. Mm -hmm. Till they had, they just had so much they didn't know what to do and how to play with it. Mm -hmm. But the the thing about it is when you said that you don't know some don't get out mm -hmm. I had to get out because I was thinking and as God was showing me what am I teaching uh, yeah. Janice and JJ mm -hmm. what am I teaching them let them know that this is normal no this mm -hmm. is not normal mm -hmm. this is not normal mm -hmm. so we go so eventually go on and uh, I moved around and my sister and her husband ended up leaving Virginia, but I stayed. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I stayed, found another place, and then I went to work um, at Caldors. And everyone, oh, one main important thing, no matter no matter what kind of lie he told, mm -hmm. I always told his family where these children were. So they, I always gave them a phone number, mm -hmm. and I didn't give them an address, but I did give them a phone number. Mm -hmm. They can call the kids anytime. Okay. I told his family, I gave it to his mom and sisters mm -hmm. and brothers. So he, if he said, I don't know where he at, but that's his love, mm -hmm. not my love. But the kids, but they knew where the kids were at all times. Mm -hmm. um, when we got to a place where we ended up back into another shelter. Yes. But from there, you got you another job. Got you another place. Got another place. Got your first car. Yes. I mean, another car? Or no, it was that first car. The first car. My first car. So things are looking great and looking yes. bright for yes. you. And at this moment, can you exhale? Do you feel yes. like you can feel that sun a little bit brighter on yes. your face and feel that breeze yes. going through your hair? And I mainly can look back and don't have to worry about looking around, see if he's coming or Hey, you be. Not, not I didn't have to not worry not. about that. That's I did not have to worry about it. My children can start sleeping. Mm -hmm. My children can start playing. My mm -hmm. children can be relaxed mm -hmm. and just be free. Mm -hmm. And they could just do what they do mm -hmm. in school mm -hmm. was excel. They can excel. And um, just with that, when you start seeing that anxiety leaving all of you, you know, leaving, did, did they experience or exhibit any behaviors in school or yes. at home? They experienced it um, while we were, of course, in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. But when we got to Virginia, they had a different turn. Mm -hmm. Their attitudes were like, oh, we know this is going to happen. He's going to find us again. Mm -hmm. but, but my brother-in-law kept talking to them. Oh, that's good. 
and he was so encouraging to them, him and my sister, okay. was so encouraging to the kids. Mm -hmm. And it was just phenomenal. I just mm -hmm. couldn't, I couldn't ask for better help than to, they really did help. Angels heal up here on earth. Yes. So just looking back at, at it all, what do you feel that you learned from that journey? I learned never to give up, never to give up on God. Always keep hope that God's unchanging hand. Mm -hmm. I also learned to trust again. Mm -hmm. Because not all men are like that. Mm -hmm. Not all fathers are like that. And they're not. Mm -hmm. There are some good ones out there. So did you meet a good one? Oh, yes. <laughs> I at was an operator at, at this store, and uh -huh. I was helping the HR make phone calls. Okay. So then I called his number, and this female answered the phone. I said, oh, this must be the wife. I said, hi, ma'am. I said, I'm calling for, you know, this gentleman, and see if he still wants a job. She said, well, he'll be home in 15 minutes. I'll tell him to call you. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. So then call back, oh, they'll speak to Lady Payne. I said, oh, Barry White, where you at? Hold up. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. I felt something I had not felt in a long time. Okay. Uh -oh. It was like two years. And I said, uh -huh. very, very white guy on the phone. Yeah, this is Brett Payne Sr. I said, hey. I said, <laughs> I said I'm sorry. Uh, yes, sir. Are you interested in the job? He said, yes. He said, I said, but if you get the job, you got to, you got to, um, Give me, you have to buy me a six pack of Pepsi and it has to be in a bottle. I don't drink out of a can. Uh -huh. He said, Sure, I'll get you that. I uh -huh. said, Okay. I said, Well, you come up now for your interview. And we went, Girl, I took a break. I said, Carolyn, you gotta hide this guy. This is my very white. And he did. He came in. Mm -hmm. This guy came in with a case of Pepsi in the bottle. I said, Uh uh. And that was him, and of course, uh, I live right across the street, so he mm -hmm. took me across the street with this case. Uh -huh. And this has been history ever since. <laughs> wow, so y'all met. I waited for God to sight. send somebody to me instead of me looking for somebody. Uh -huh. I waited for God to send somebody to me. I quit looking at the stores. I quit looking at the churches. I quit uh -huh. looking down the street, my neighbors, brothers, cousin, friends. I quit uh -huh. looking. Uh -huh. Stop looking and uh -huh. just... Relax and let go. Because I know when he, whoever he's going to bring to me is going to be worth right it. for you. And absolutely. And good to you. Yes, good, good to me, for good you. for me, and best of all, good for my children. Your children. That was the most important thing. Mm -hmm. He was good for my children. Mm -hmm. no, we dated eight years before eight we got years. married. Eight okay. years before we got married. So because he said that married. I want to make sure he was straight. Oh, good for you. You know, that first one really puts some thoughts into your mm -hmm. mind. You really have to make sure, yep, check, check. Don't have check. No, it's got to be a full check. Right. And he was. I mm -hmm. told him, he said, well, eventually, he said, I'm going to move to a house. I'm going to buy you a house. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. And he kept his promises. He kept his promises. So how long have you been married? Then? We've been married 22 years. Mm -hmm. 22 years. We've been in our house 23 years. Praise so God. he is... A man of the house, a husband to you, and he was a father to your children. A father How to my beautiful. children, and I'm a stepmom to his kids. And a stepmom to his kids. And it's just amazing. It's he amazing. Is, what is the one thing that you wish they would know that would make their life just a little bit easier? Know that their your dreams can come true. Oh, that's powerful. And just hold on to their hope and dream. Don't never give up. Mm -hmm. Again, it goes right back to what I said before. Hold on to God's unchanging hand, no matter how shaky the ground, mm -hmm. no matter how weak you get, no matter how just so ready to give up. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Dreams do come true. That's powerful. Thank you, Mrs. Nadine. Yeah, thank you for having me. For, for coming here and sharing your story and just being so transparent Amen. and just Amen. offering just a ray of hope. <laughs> Amen. Just Amen. hope for a rainy day. And yes. I want to let you know that everything Miss Nadine has stated, that if you resonate with it, take the action steps to get yourself to a place of safety. Yes. Hold on to your dream and know that the good is for you. Yes. Hope is good. Keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Once again, my name is Candy Zenon. I'm an author and a life coach and CEO founder of Changing Seasons Life Coaching. And I just came here today to help you love through it 
learn from it, and live after it. Until next Sunday, thank you.